Okay, good morning, YouTubers and Facebook family members. Um, I was on the uh, YouTube and I did a follow up on a video I had done uh, for uh, deworming of the puppies, and I want to show you the results from that time. But I heard some very alarming uh, assumptions about Parvo. Okay. Parvo just doesn't just get there like that. It's everywhere. It's in the ground. You traffic it into the house on your shoes. It can be carried uh, on the hands. And as long as it's not in the right place for it to actually activate, it's not going to create a problem. If your puppy's immune system is, is that which can ward it off, you won't have a problem with that as well. But um, uh, Parvo just doesn't happen overnight and the dog gets sick tomorrow. It usually has an incubation period of about two weeks. And what it does is strips the lining out of the intestine. So there is an initial uh, change in appetite, uh, some lethargy, or, or the dog may not want to eat. But there will be diarrhea. And... Uh, if, if you don't go out and watch your dog's uh, poop, then you will never know how that dog is doing. Uh, I have some pictures here of, uh, okay, this is examining your dog. You should be doing some kind of uh, examination. That's looking in his mouth, his face, you know, for lumps, bites. You can find ticks. Um, the, the butt end of a tick sticking out on the dog. So you need to be diligent in, in examining your animals every day for certain changes. Okay. And when you walk out for them to go to the bathroom, if they're indoor dogs, even if they're indoor, they can uh, acquire parvo. Like I said, it can be brought in by the shoes, but don't get paranoid and start having people bleach their shoes. Uh, I do suggest if it's a puppy that you not let anyone put their fingers in the mouth without washing their hands. Um, I don't know, for some reason everybody likes to get licked by a dog but um, in the puppy breath. But uh, if they have a cold, even though it's considered a kennel cough, you can transfer your bacteria to the dog. It, all it needs is a respiratory system to activate. And then you've got a bacterial infection, and it's called kennel cough in the dog. And it's the flu or whatever it is with us. So uh, you always want to see nice, firm stool like this. Can you see that? Okay. The shadow is kind of hiding it, but you want nice, firm stool. Uh, when you see anything like this, squirts out like water, this is like day one. Then you need to start becoming really proactive in, in, in your treatment, and I'll go over that in a minute. Okay, you know, this is after it sits out. If you see anything like that, you need to start working on it right away. Okay. Now, I have a, a medication that I mix up, and it usually lets me know if it's parvo or just coccidiosis. If your dog stays outside, there's a chance that the birds may crap in their water or in their uh, dry food dish if you don't remove it. And then uh, when they eat the bird droppings, then you have another intestinal inf infection uh, occurring and resulting with diarrhea as well, and uh, that will need to be treated. But uh, this is still part of day one. Uh, this picture here had started getting bloody, and um, this is day two. I started my own treatment, and it started to firm up, as you can see. That's day, should have been, yeah, that's day three there. That was day two. Uh -huh. Okay, you see it's still kind of yucky looking. Yeah, so it's, it's trying to firm up. Okay, that's day four. 
and it's starting to look like regular stool. It's still kind of yucky looking, but it's not water. When it's diarrhea, they absolutely lose a lot of the electrolytes that they need to have, the potassium for sure. Um, okay, it's starting to harden up there. Mm -hmm. And there we're getting some puddles. It looks like pudding, but I'm glad to see that at any time. Okay, and then we got day five. And it's starting to stand up, yeah. And day five. And then that was like day seven. And then that first picture I showed you was from that point on. Now what had happened, I had three litters on the ground and uh, one puppy had parvo and I had to separate everybody. Oh, it was just crazy. And he had gotten so bad, the flies had already started invading his nose and ears and he wasn't really dead. You could count the ribs on him. Um, uh, he, he was able to drink water. And uh, on a Thursday, I had decided I was gonna put him to sleep. And, uh, but I changed my mind. I said, well, I'm gonna start an IV. So, this is what I did. It, it was confirmed that it was Parvo. I took him in and so I had to start separating the puppies according to how their health looked. So the ones that were showing uh, signs not as bad as his, but because uh, I had varying degrees of parvo going on. The ones that were still running around active but exposed, I moved them on another side of the house. And the ones that were kind of finicky, not eating, a good test to uh, always find out if your dog is sick is to cook chicken, chicken livers and rice. And if they don't eat that, then there's something wrong. But since Choco had not been eating in about three weeks, I need an IV with uh, sugar. So you can either use the D5 and half the salt, or either you can use uh, D5 lactated ringers, as long as it has some sugar in there because the blood sugar is probably low, the potassium, you, you need some electrolytes going on, Pedialyte, uh, will always uh, suffice uh, instead of water, if you can get it in. Um, I started the IV, gave him eight ounces of water of the um, D5 uh, and a half saline. And, um, and by Saturday, he was actually eating. I had, was feeding the other crew and I laid some chicken and rice down and when I turned around, it was an empty bowl. And so that was a joyous day for us all. I only lost one out of 17 puppies. And I don't know what was wrong with her. Because uh, her, her stool was a bright red, which is not typical for uh, parvo. It's usually old, bloody, because it's been in the intestines and it's set there. And, um, and it's partially digested. Um, so you get nausea. You'll get vomiting, you'll get watery diarrhea, uh, and, and then eventually the puppy uh, will start getting really uh, motionless, just moping around, laying around, and, and the nose is dry. You can always feel that. The dog's temperatures usually run around 101, so uh, anything over that, you can, if you go on that far to take a temperature. Um, some people like to use the syringe to put the saline uh, sub-Q, like you give a puppy shot, but that does not work. Uh, the IV intravenously works the best. Um, this, uh, it, it just doesn't work. I, I find that doesn't work. I've been around a lot of people with Parvo, and, um, and they feel like they have the answer, and I let them do what they do, and the dogs usually die. So um, after Chaco had his eight ounces of IV fluid, I gave it to him 
in uh, two days because you don't want to overload uh, the, the body with fluid. And, um, and he pulled through. Actually, he grew up to be a, a very handsome 60-pound uh, uh, pit bull. And again, there are uh, breeds specific for uh, susceptibility of parvo. You've got pit bulls, you have the Rottweilers, Dobies. It's basically your high profile dogs are more susceptible to it, but it can be uh, um, acquired by any of the um, uh, breeds of dogs. And you can just never be too careful. And um, whether they have shots or not, uh, it's a poor breeder who won't give a dog uh, or puppy their first shots until they've actually left the, uh, the breeder to go to their new home. Uh, if you're going to breed, you need to be prepared to, to um, immunize these puppies right, put them on a good diet. Uh, pedigree is not on my list. You need to read the labels. It should have uh, meat, no byproducts as your first. It shouldn't have corn. A lot of dogs have allergies. Pit bulls have a lot of skin allergies. Uh, corn should not be your first ingredient. Uh, and you should not use uh, anything as a preservative except uh, vitamin E. The other, uh, ethoxyquin is a, a carcinogen. And... Um, you just need to read labels. You can't go by commercials. You, you have to use common sense. It's just like having a child, and, and you need to just read labels and think. You know, the dog is not human. They have animal instincts, and, um, you know, all that babying and, and cuddly, oh, he won't do this, he won't do that. It's an animal. So you have to think ahead of the animal itself. Now, um... This needs to be in your cabinet for the dogs, Pepto-Bismol. You cannot give them Tylenol products, but this has aspirin in it. So this helps calm the stomach down during Parvo too. But I have a mixture that I use and it has worked uh, for the coccidiosis and it's flagell. You mix about uh, two, two to four ounces of the Pepto-Bismol and, and add about eight tablets of the Flagyl. It's a, Flagyl is a, a antibiotic that does not deplete the intestines of the good bacteria. And, and it's basically used for women with uh, their uh, vaginal infections from uh, bubble bath and, and yeast and stuff like that. So I usually keep a handful of that on uh, stock at all times. You know, I guess the doctors say, well, she certainly has a lot of infections. But anyway, I get it so that I can keep it for the dogs primarily because they're outside. And like I say, the birds, um, you know, if they, they rarely leave any food, but if they should leave a drop or two, uh, a, a, then a kibble or two, then the, uh, they might poop in there and the birds and, and the dogs will eat it. So um, anytime you see irregular uh, BM, you can start with that doses. And you give, um, okay, if they weigh 50 pounds, I used to give them five cc's of that mixture. It's usually uh, uh, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds. That's, that's how I calculate it. So, um, you know, it's your dog, it's your property. You can basically do whatever that's, uh, you know, safe and, and responsible for your dog. Some things just don't need to go to the vet. It's just common sense. Uh, and if you read a book uh, or two, they have medical books for the dogs, the veterinarian books you can read up on. Uh, different ailments, what you see. And, um, you know, I've gone to the vet and they said the dog had parvo. And I said, no, I don't think it is parvo. And so they ran a test and it wasn't parvo. So that wasn't my, my cost. So I was kind of glad I won that argument. That doesn't happen all the time. But um, 
that was and and that mixture with the Pepto and the Flagyl knocked it right out. So I'm going to show you a chart of how the immune system is set up when the puppies are born. Okay, from the time of birth, the puppies acquire their immune system or their immunities through the milk of their mom. So it's very important that if you are a breeder that all those puppies get on a tit as soon as possible to get that colostrum, that first uh, milk that is uh, excreted in the first 24 hours. After six weeks, as you can see, the immunity starts to drop. Now that's where you as the human and pet owner are supposed to give that first shot. And that gives it a, a nice booster back up to a level that the dog can at least ward off some um, bacteria and viruses. Um, then again, after two weeks, you see it drops. And it continues that same pattern until it's four months. That's when it, the, every dog's immune system kicks in on its own. And so he'll get the last shot at 16 weeks, and then you'll get the first rabies shot. And that's basically all that's required. Um, let's see. It's been so. It's I haven't really been in a breeding house in about eight nine years. But um, you definitely have to have the parvovirus in your uh, in in your puppy shots. And um, I guess that's about it for right now. But. There was a, a young lady on the YouTube, uh, and she said her dog had parvo and had had been eating pork chops or something. I, I remember her saying something about pork. And I parvo doesn't just come like that overnight and then um, and then go away in a couple of days. And she gave him charcoal. I think the dog had a. a a bout of pancreatitis from the grease in the food. Some dogs are just like people. That whole digestive tract, the pancreas, the bile duct, and the um, liver and all that stuff, um, that's supposed to break down fat. It could be a malfunction in that. Some breeds are more susceptible to not uh, digest and you have to have special diets for them. So I, I doubt very seriously if that was parvo. But um, keep the dog warm. If it's confirmed as parvo, the tests usually run about $40, $50, depending on the vet. Um, but if you've got the symptoms, again, the watery stool, lack of appetite, and, um, and just no energy and, and fever, then you basically can can say it is a uh, case of parvo. Now parvo is a virus, so antibiotics will not uh, cure it. What you basically want to do is just kind of prevent anything else from sure. starting. And uh, uh, viruses are encapsulated in their own housing. And they can lay around for 20 years until the right conditions uh, conditions occur. So with Parvo, the damp ground, uh, March, between January and March, is, is just a, a panic time for me when I have puppies because I know that's when the viruses are at their highest and, and just can be tracked in. Yeah, I mean, if you can't see them, you can't smell them, taste them, but um, you just need to make sure that you don't let anybody, I don't care if it offends them or not, trust me, I've offended a lot of people. They didn't want to wash their hands. Well, you can't touch my puppies. And so um, that's just the way it is. You're responsible for them. And if you, you know, selling the puppies, you definitely have to keep your, um, your money coming in. Um, my dogs took great care of themselves. Their uh, vet bills. Uh, their food, um, everything was taken care of by them because they were a good bloodline um, and, and, and nice looking puppies, nice looking dogs. So um, keep your environment clean. It, it's going to wear you out, but 
it's just something that has to be done. That's part of being a good breeder or dog owner. Socializing. Uh, okay. Uh, one thing I found out works real good is the shredded paper I used to bring home from work. Oh my goodness, I made a, a huge box for them. And, and that shredded paper keeps the odor down. You, you, you put a layer of regular newspaper at the bottom and then throw the shredded paper in there. It is like a self-cleaning uh, system. Once they poop, and pee it you they trample over it and it covers the, the 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 stool up all and you just scoop it out you just pull it out or roll it in the paper when you change the next day but yeah shredded paper if you have a shredder at home and you are breeding just keep that was my cisco right there he was such a beautiful dog see cisco yeah and um and then outside, this is Sheba and her litter of puppies. Very proud mama. Yep. Yep. Keep it clean, keep it clean, keep it clean. And um, these, I moved to a farm, so it kind of looks like a chicken shack. But um, still, again, you have to keep it clean. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, who's at the door? That was Cisco when he grew up with Panther. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, there's Cisco again. Mm -hmm. Just as cute as he could be. That dog had a huge head. It's part of the family. Can't ask for a better guard than that. <laughs> and, you know, some some dogs you just will never be able to socialize and um, others you will be able to do all kind of little tricks together. But um, this is Sheba on your left and um, she was, that was the best dog I ever had. This is Sheba and, and Flojo. Flojo was ADBA. Sheba was um, uh, UKC. And they are howling to a um, fire siren, uh, fire, fire truck. And this is Rocky. He came in first place that day. That's Sheba's son. And that was the last time I was a ever able to show him. He was so aggressive, it was just crazy. Okay, this is a nice, clean litter. Yeah. This is a Staffy, Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Smart as a whip. Smart. That was, that was my dog. See, he slept on my head. <laughs> in fact he thought I was his mama I guess he peed on me one day okay this was a dog that was rescued ended up on my property scruffy and this is how Parvo looks eventually you can count the ribs just like on my puppy you know I don't know how long this dog had been on the street but um, we got him back to fat he was he was a good dog too. He looked like he was a pit mix too, with a shepherd or something. Just terrible, poor baby. Okay, that's us taking a nap again. You yeah. know, they're just part of the family. That's us on the road. You know, you got your crates. That's mother and son right there, Rocky and Sheba. And Panther, and then there's O.E. Yep, Old English. <laughs> there they are. What you talking about, Dad? <laughs> okay. And 
And this was Solomon. Solomon and Sheba, they produced Rocky. Good looking dogs. Yeah. But again, you have to train too. We were on a down stay, all three dogs. I trained them together. You know, we go to the park. And that was uh, the activity. They're just like children. Uh, you have problems when you leave them in the backyard. Like this last group I have here, I only have three rescues, and um, they are just totally aggressive, and I really don't have time to try to break that. But we, we work fine. We've got a system going, and um, I will show you how to reinforce your kennels when you have the escape artists that like to dig. Oh, I've got pictures of, of that. Where is it? Oh, well, it must be in the back. But yeah, they can, um, pit bulls. Oh, here it is. They love the corners. That's the last thing you want to do is wake up, come out in the morning, and dog is gone. And there's the evidence. Yeah. So, we'll talk about that later. I will um, follow up with the worming. I have uh, tapeworms and roundworms to show you. And uh, uh, leave me a comment. Tell me if this helps you uh, or not and uh, where I can improve. And um, if your dog is sick, I really hope it gets better with some of the or with all of the information that I gave you and I, above all I hope you have a better understanding of how the first six months of your puppy's life should be um, as a responsible pet owner okay thank you so much